Hi, I'm Phyllis, and my website is southernfrugal.com. Uh, it's late in the afternoon, let's see, it's almost 5.30, and uh, we're getting ready to have the, our big meal of the day because we've been working earlier. And uh, so what we're going to have is an open-faced chicken pie. That's what we'll call it, for lack of any other word. So the first thing I want to do is uh, get my pie crust out of the refrigerator. Hold on. So this time I was able to get the great value. Now mostly at our local Walmart they're always sold out of the great value. And I can't tell a bit of difference between the great value and the Pillsbury. Not one bit of difference. Anyway, we're going to let it sit out here for just a few minutes and we're going to saute some vegetables to go in the pie. So a viewer suggested uh, sautéing vegetables or adding uh, bacon grease to different things. I, I, I remember the comment, I don't remember what, what she was suggesting that we add it to, but I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and use a couple of teaspoons of bacon grease and I do save mine in that and uh, I've got this on my channel under products I highly recommend and uh, I do keep it in the refrigerator because we don't really have bacon that often anyway. So uh, the other thing I wanted to do is kind of demonstrate the Vidalia onion chopper. It's called the Chop Whiz. I do highly recommend this. So I'm going to use some peppers, a little bit of celery, and some onions. So let me move you all closer so you can see. And uh, one, one person wrote in and said they had already broke theirs. Now, I have used mine for um, at least four and a half years now, and uh, I hit it pretty hard too, but I'm using this real fine little uh, cutting part today because I want my peppers and onions and the celery to cook pretty quick. So I've got my celery in little chunks here. What I do, and, and I don't know if y'all think this is right or not, but it's the way I do it. I just put it down there. Hit it like that. I know that's loud, but that's the way I do it. Let me do the rest of these real quick here. This was a couple of uh, big stalks of celery and I didn't use the whole thing because some of them had some you know marks on it. So I'm putting it across like that so it'll cut all those little strings too. what you do. Okay. All right, so now I've got half of, of green bell pepper. I hope y'all could see that pretty good. So I'm going to put the skin side down on the little cutters. Sometimes they're a little hard to do. All right, let's try turning it the other way and see if we get it any better. Much better. All right, so we're going to do the onion now. And if I find my knife, just use this knife. So, what I like, this is a half of a sort of a medium onion. I'm just going to cut. Vegetables, I'm just take it apart. 
And this way I know they're all the same size. All right, so we're going to dump it into this grease now, which might be a little too hot. Let's find out. All right, so we've got that onion, half a bell pepper, and a couple of stalks of celery in there. And by the way, you can uh, measure with this too on the sides. It's got the measurements there. So all you do is just turn it up and see what you got. Now I want these completely done. I'm going to put it back on the burner. Got that burner on medium. And we're going to saute this. And I'm not going to put any salt in the, in the vegetables. Already smells good. Alright, so I want them to cook pretty quick. And to get that to happen, I need to put a lid on it. Have that heat on about the medium so I don't have to keep stirring it and stirring it. All right, so uh, what I'm going to uh, do is uh, insert a little clip somewhere about the middle of this video and I'll show you all what we've been doing out in the yard because we ran into a little bit of problem with some vines we call Tarzan vines. And uh, we, we really didn't even know they were out there, but then we found out. So we have been working pretty much all week on that section of the yard. It's like the jungle out there, okay? So I'll just insert a little clip somewhere in here. All right, we'll be back when these vegetables get done. Now I'm going to go ahead and unroll my pie crust on my pizza sheet. We'll be back. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. 15 minutes and these uh, uh, vegetables are pretty well done. So what I want to do is dump them out in a little bowl that's got a paper towel in it to soak up any moisture. Now if you've got mushrooms, mushrooms would be also very good with this. Very good indeed. All right, so we're just going to let those cool. It's time to start cooking our pie crust. So I did put a, ever the slightest bit of Crisco, on, uh, just regular canned Crisco shortly on this pan. My crust has been out long enough now, I think. And we're just going to roll it out. I think I'm going to do it like this this time. Yeah, I've made a lot of these since we started making them, a lot. Just mash that down. And I've got my oven preheated to 450 degrees, and we're going to cook this for about 10 minutes. We want it crispy, but I don't want it puffed up in the middle anywhere, so I'm going to poke it full of holes. Yeah, y'all know in, in the Walmart that I go to, and where I also get uh, grocery pickup, they're always out of the great value pie crust. Always. So irritating. The only way I can get them is if I go in myself and go on an odd day, then they have them. But if I, like, get my groceries picked up, say, on Friday morning, they don't have them. They're out. So a whole bunch of holes in that. Make sure it's mashed down completely. All right, y'all, we're going to cook this now again, 450 degrees for about 10 minutes. Let it get good and brown. Then we're going to add the rest of the stuff to it. We'll be back. All right, we just took the pie crust out of the oven. If this is still hot. Now I've got four ounces of uh, cream cheese. That would be just, I just cut the pack in half, the eight ounce pack in half, put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. Make sure you put something over it because it will start popping and cracking really. All right, let me get another spatula here. And we're just going to rub some of this right on there. Now 
while this crust is still hot. immediately close the oven door so it's still going to be hot so after we get everything on this crust we're going to put it back in the oven while we get the tea and all the other stuff ready for the meal So I went ahead and put the uh, bake, I mean the uh, celery, onions, and peppers on the uh, paper towel to sort of drain them. Make sure there's nothing, uh, not a lot of liquid in there. We're just going to spread those out. Yeah, this is kind of like a pizza, but we'll just call it an open face chicken pie. Of course, it doesn't have the pizza crust. It's got uh, a regular pie crust, which is what makes it so easy to make these. And I did like the idea of cooking the onions, peppers, and celery in that bacon grease. I like that a lot. All right, next thing we're going to put on. This is from rotisserie chicken that I got at Walmart last week, and we had a couple of meals off of it, and I took, this is mostly thigh meat, and uh, went ahead and just froze it, just so I could use it for one of these open-faced pies. Just sprinkle that all around. That's about three-fourths of a cup of uh, chicken. Right on top. All right. And the other thing I'm going to do, I also fixed some uh, chickpeas the first part of the week. These were left over, so I just stuck them in the refrigerator. But I do want them not wet or not. I don't want a lot of fluid in them, so I'm just going to dump them on the paper towel. See if I can't soak up any moisture. Yeah. See, there's a lot of moisture there. See that? Yeah. All right. So we're gonna put those right over the chicken. Give a little extra protein there. Of course, the the it's just endless what you can do with these crusts. It really is. And one of the things the uh, cream cheese does is it will keep the crust uh, crispy. In other words, nothing really doesn't soak through, but you still want to make sure your ingredients are as dry as you can get them. Pick off some of those little shells that are on the chickpeas. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is shred some Parmesan cheese. Now remember I hadn't put any salt on anything. I think there was a little bit of salt in the chickpeas when I cooked them. But I'm just going to maybe use a microplaner. Put that right on top. That'll give me any salt we need. Yeah, I was hoping to have some grapes to go on this because I really like grapes with chicken. And they were all gone, so I couldn't use the grapes. All right, so that's some Parmesan cheese on top. And then we're going to top that with some shredded Monterey Jack cheese. And I do like that. Um, it doesn't, in, in part, as much of a taste as the uh, cheddar cheese does, unless you just wanted that 
extra taste, but I want to be able to taste the chicken in there and the Parmesan cheese. So that's about a cup of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. Yeah, I made one this past week and put pepper jack on it. That was really good too. Stuff all that off. Alright, so we're going to set this back in the oven. And the oven won't be on and it will melt this cheese and heat everything up. All right, y'all, I'm going to fix the tea, and I've already cooked or steamed some bok choy before I started all this. Mr. Buckley's decided he loves bok choy, so we're going to have a little bowl of that on the plate, and I'm not sure what else, if anything. We'll be back, and I'll show you what everything looks like on the plate. All right, we got the meal on the plate, and uh, we got the uh, two pieces of the... Uh, open-faced chicken pie. There's the bok choy steamed and some orange jello with it's got uh, marshmallows and some mar uh, mandarin oranges in it. And of course we've got our iced tea. There's my plate. And here's two leftover which we'll probably come back in here and eat in a few minutes. All right. There's the plate. We are ready to eat. And I am going to add that clip of uh, some of the work we were doing out in the yard at the end of this video rather than try to put it in the middle since I'm not very good at doing that. So we'll put it at the end of this. All right, y'all. We will see y'all next time. Bye for now. Hey, y'all. Phyllis here. I wanted to come out. My screen and my lens have fogged up still. Okay. So I got me a hat recommended by a viewer that's got a net on it and it keeps the gnats away from my eyes, which is great. Hold on, I've got to uh, wipe my lens off. It's so humid out here. Hold on. All right, now my neighbor's air conditioner's come on now. Anyway, I wanted to show you what we have been doing out here. Oh, it fogged up again. Sorry, y'all. Anyway. This is the area where Mr. Bucky cleaned all this out and back way over there. And uh, so what we've got going is, see this little thing right here? That's a massive uh, bulb. And what grows from that bulb are things like, wait a minute, let me find one. I know there's one still in here. Hold on. Unless Mr. Bucky got it out. Huh. I don't see one. Well, we can look and see one right there. See all that? Yeah. Those are, I call them Tarzan vines. Son of a gun, hold on. Look at this. Now, yeah. See them growing up there? Can y'all see? Look at that. Yeah. Tarzan could swing from these vines anyway. Uh, what we have to do is cut them and then let them die up there and then you can just pull them down. But they have got massive briars on them. And, uh, oh yeah, here's one. Here's one right there. See it? Yeah. Terrible, terrible. We just had a complete downpour a few minutes ago. So, anyway, you saw that vine. Well, you see those little things? They all came up since Mr. Bucky cleaned this out. And so we have been working all week because they were all over there where we had already cleaned them out. So now we have got to dig them up because they got a little bulb under them. So that's the worst place. Are we fogging up again? I tell you what, it is super humid out here. Sorry, I have to keep wiping that off. Anyway, I was wanting to show you one that had all those massive briars that the bottom part of them have these massive briars on them and uh, there was one right here that Mr. Bucky got that up earlier I think but there's another one I don't know if y'all can see that or not see the one that's like a green color I don't know if it shows up or not but what you have to do is cut them and a lot of them are all the way up to the top of this massive tree. And so what you have to do is cut them and then those little things that are 
like on grapevines that curl around the limbs and die pretty quick and then pull them down then. But anyway, so yeah, Mr. Bucky's got his area pretty well clean. Well, not completely because there's a couple of them coming up right there. I mean, now some of these green leaves you see like on here are just where we had this massive thunderstorm a while ago. And so that's not the same thing as that little garden over there. I mean, there must be thousands in there. Anyway, I'm going to insert this video in the middle of, we're getting ready to make, um, let's see, what will we call it? An open face chicken pie with some other stuff on it. Anyway, I'll load this sort of in the middle of that while that pie is cooking. All right. So y'all can see where we've been working all week and I haven't made any videos, but we did have to go back and get more cedar. I think we got about 20 more bags. Of course, we've got bags to put out there. But before we do that, we gotta get all those little green things out with the little bulb on the end. Oh, and here's another one. Let me show you that one. They're scary. They're so big. See those right there? Yeah those kind of yellowish tan things that's some that have been there probably for years and years and years of course my neighbor's got them in his yard too but they grow i mean like a foot a night literally because we have come out here and there was one up right over here and it was it was really over my head but i was asking mr buck i said how can that thing get up in that tree well i looked it up on the internet i don't remember what they're called but they do grow really really fast mr bucky's going to be fixing that. did we fog up again there mr bucky's going to be fixing that fence over there it's pretty bad where that tree is really kind of broken it really anyway let's go inside because i've got to fix us something to eat so while we're out in the light and my lens doesn't seem to be fogging up now, I wanted to show you how this works. Like this, and you pull it tight around your neck and the mats cannot get through this. It works wonderful. I mean, really wonderful. Of course, we don't have many mats out now. The reason we don't is because we just had a total downpour. All right, we got to go cook something. Hold on.